Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Thank you all for joining me today. The kids are back in school. It is fall. We just picked the apples off of our two apple trees. Check out this box of apples. I know it is a ton. And so I am busy in the kitchen today, baking away, trying to use up some of our apples. And um, I did cinnamon apple bread. I've got several loaves baking in the oven right now. And I'm gonna whip up a few batches of my famous old fashioned apple crisp recipe and share it all with y'all. I posted this recipe last fall and it is the most popular recipe on my In the Kitchen with Grace channel. It is phenomenal. It's my great grandma's recipe. It's been passed down. I have been making it for over 20 years and it is phenomenal. So um, when you're working with fresh apples like I am here, you need to go quickly because they will start to brown and oxidize um, as soon as you start to peel and cut them. I used a good old apple peeler that I, we got from an apple orchard like, I don't know, a decade ago. Love to use it. And basically I have peeled my apples. It pre-slices them. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut them in smaller pieces. We're gonna do this quickly. And then I'm gonna grab some fresh lemon juice. Let's put these in a bowl. And put the lemon juice over the apples because that helps prevent the browning. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna coat these in brown sugar and bake them anyways. And I'm gonna show you um, a variation today that you could do for your apple crisp. I'm gonna to link to the original apple crisp recipe that I posted a year ago. And uh, it's essentially the same thing until we add in the extras at the end. You're gonna to wanna to get a gallon Ziploc baggie. And I have peeled, I think it was seven apples. A couple of our apples were smaller. I would normally use about five to six good sized apples. Some people like to leave the peels on their apples. Totally fine, that's up to you. All right, I'm gonna go grab a lemon. I'm gonna use fresh lemon. You could totally use your little bottle of lemon juice in the fridge. Got me a nice good lemon, y'all. If your lemon's a little bit hard, mine's soft. If your lemon's hard, give it a nice roll. Anytime you can do that with citrus, it loosens it up on the inside, makes it a lot easier to juice. Mine has a seed. I think that's the only seed. I'm gonna use my hand, my hands are clean. Use a strainer if you want. I don't think my lemons are seedy today. Thank goodness. All right. Actually, I think I'm good to go. I'm just gonna squeeze it. I don't see a single seed in this lemon. You wanna use about two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. I'm gonna grab a spoon. I've been baking, I'm down to my short spoons. Toss your apples here in that lemon juice. This kind of breaks them up a little bit for you also. Smells good already. I love to bake, y'all. Check out my baking playlist above. Got some awesome recipes. I'm just gonna use my hand just for ease. You've got a kid helping you. This is a fun recipe. My daughter loves to help bake. She actually picked most of the apples off the trees for me. All right, I'm gonna close this Ziploc just for a moment. I'm gonna drain the juice out of here quick. In our large bowl, we are going to add in about three quarters to a cup of flour. We're gonna get out our brown sugar. Or sorry, grab your oats first before you grab that brown sugar. The brown sugar is gonna go right in with the apples. We're gonna grab our oats. I'm using old fashioned oats. I prefer to use these if I'm baking and we are gonna grab again about one, uh, it's about a cup. I like to do a little bit extra to add some to the top. So there's one. Woo, I ended up being about a half. It's totally okay, it's apple crisp. 
It's all right if you got some extra oats. I love the recipes that you don't have to be exact with. And we are gonna give this a little whiskey whisk, mix it together. Okay, I'm gonna set this to the side. I'm gonna grab my brown sugar and we want one cup of brown sugar. And we're gonna open up our baggie of apples. You could totally do this in a large bowl. I just feel like this is gonna be one of them shake and bake things. So we're gonna dump the brown sugar on in. We're gonna grab our cinnamon. You want about two teaspoons of cinnamon, but one and three quarters, about two teaspoons. I personally love the cinnamon. I feel like you can't go wrong on the cinnamon with this. There's one. The cinnamon's about empty. Oh, there we go, perfect. Zip this up. Give it a nice shake. If your kids are helping you, got young ones, my daughter loves doing this. She still does, even though she's a teenager. Give it a good shake. Mix it in. Coat those apples really, really well. All right, we're going to let the apple sit. Grab your bowl of flour and oats again. Let me grab a little, so I'm just going to use my wrapper. You need half a cup of butter, cold butter, okay, which is a stick. Give it a little slice all the way down. And you're going to cut the butter on into your flour and oats. This is such an easy, simple recipe. Makes your whole house smell amazing. And honestly, I don't know anybody who does not like apple crisp or cinnamon. Apple bread for that matter. Then you're gonna take your little bread pieces or butter pieces, put them right on into your flour and oats. Kind of separate the pieces a little bit if you can. And then I like to use a knife and go ahead and just cut. Cut that butter on in a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna take my one cup measuring spoon, grab about a cup's worth to put on top, and we're gonna grab our baggie of apples, put them into our mixing bowl. Mix it into your flour and oats. Now, depending on how big your apples are, you may want to add in just a little bit more flour and oats, totally fine. I feel like I'm gonna do that for mine. I'm gonna grab just a bit of flour, probably about a half cup, and a handful of oats, literally a handful. Give this a nice mix. There we go, that's better. You want there to be a little bit of oats with kind of stuck to each piece of apple, sort of. All right, I'm gonna grab my baking tins here, disposable ones, because I am actually gonna be uh, selling these here to friends. And I'm going to, this particular tin, use whatever size you want, you guys. Um, normally I would make this in an actual pie tin, or in like a nine by nine baking dish. You can use metal or glass, it does not matter. Um, this particular dish is probably five by seven, maybe three inches deep. Oh, there we go. I guess I had a little bit of my flour and oats still stuck to the bottom of my bowl. That's why it seemed a little less on mine. There we go, look at that. Mm. This is gonna be amazing. It fills one of these tins or a pie crust just about perfectly, in my opinion. 
And I'm gonna grab my little cup of oats, butter. We're gonna sprinkle this on over the top. And then I kind of like to use my spoon, give it just a little bit of a push down into there. Cause you don't want the top to burn, but you do want it to be nicely crispy on top. You can see the little dabs of butter. This is perfect. All right, I'm gonna pop it in the oven. Um, I'm probably gonna do it at about 375 degrees. Every oven's a little different. I'm gonna keep an eye on mine, probably 15 to 20 minutes and mine will be perfectly baked. I'll show you what it looks like when we are all done. All right, friends, I have made three batches of apple crisp and I'm now making the version that we are gonna keep here for ourselves to enjoy. And I'm gonna share with you an add-in that you can do. Actually, this is a lot of apple crisp. I'm probably gonna make two batches, one plain, and then one we are going to add in pecans and cranberries. Now you can do this two ways. You can do plain old pecans that are chopped and plain old dried cranberries, or you can cheat. <laughs> if you're like us, we eat a ton of salad in our house. And so we've got all sorts of salad toppings and um, I have one that is sweetened cranberries and candied pecans. So I'm gonna actually add this into my apple crisp. It's gonna add extra yumminess and it's gonna be amazing. All right, I'm gonna use two different colored glass baking dishes, nine by nines. So it's easy to tell which one's got the pecans and cranberries and which one's plain. Let me tell you, I still have so many apples in that box. I'm gonna have to keep coming up with some more recipes. I'm gonna do some apple pancakes. Um, and you know what, I'm gonna trade some apples. I've got a friend who has peach trees she wanted some apples, so I'm gonna trade with her and I'm gonna do um, a twist on peach pie, a bourbon peach pie cobbler. Um, and I have some peach cobbler style recipes. I will link to those for you as well above, so check them out. If you've got some peaches and you're like, what do I do with peaches? All right. So that's pretty good. Let's spread this around here. Okay, there's the plain one. Mix this in thoroughly. Some of the apples at the bottom didn't get mixed as well. All right, let's grab my baggie. Now these are the ones that are sweetened cranberry candy pecans. Got this in the salad dressing aisle at Walmart. Just gonna throw the whole thing in. It's gonna be amazing. Now, if you have um, caramel topping for like ice cream, whether it's in the squeeze bottle or the jar, after you have baked this, like when you go to scoop up a serving, actually, I take that back. You can totally bake it on as well. Um, add some to the top. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not even sure if I have caramel topping right now. Um, I'm gonna have to look because that sounds awesome. But caramel would go amazing with this as well. I don't want to add all that extra flour that's at the bottom. All right, I'm gonna go bake these in the oven. I'll show you what all of these apple crisps look like when they are all ready. Here is the first batch of apple crisp that we made today. I have two more of these in the oven of this size plus the plain version and the cranberry pecan version that we are going to keep for ourselves to enjoy. Thank you all so much for watching today. I know you're going to love this recipe. It's awesome. It's one of the best fall recipes you can make. Everybody loves it. See you guys next time.